Welcome to Freiwelt TV am Puls. I'm joined by Steve Bannon and of course we are talking about what's at stake at the US presidential election. I will stick to English but let me just address the German audience. Herzlich willkommen bei Freiwelt TV am Puls. Heute wieder mit Steve Bannon. Wir sprechen über die Wahlen und über einen Putsch, einen Staatsstreich in den Vereinigten Staaten. We we'll talk about what some call the rolling coup to unseat Donald Trump. Steve Bannon, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for, thank you for having me. Uh, before we start, I want to start with something which was up in the German media, of course, and uh, concerning the indictments you're facing. You're out on a five million dollar bar. Um, we will present the whole interview you gave on that on Fox News to the to our public. But just in brief, are you uh, are you um, worried about going to jail? Are you guilty? Uh, this this is 100. As we get into this interview, you see that the. Uh that the uh, deep state is trying to put me down. It was, tried to, it, was, it was, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, but there are also no coincidences, right? I've been very good over my career of connecting the dots of what's really going on, whether that was Brexit, whether it was the rise of Trump and populism, Trump's victory, uh, the pandemic. I'm the very first public figure in the world to start talking, in the West, to start talking about the pandemic, really even in China, do you think? Back in early January this year, We started the show, we're in pandemic, we've been the leaders. Uh, what they did is to four years almost to the day that I took over the Trump campaign, they dropped this bogus indictment, right? I've got a contract with the, with the wall situation. I have a contract, a million dollar contract to provide services, right? So this, this is 1,000% yeah. the deep state trying to keep me off the Trump campaign. But here's where they screwed up. I was never going back to the Trump campaign. I stepped into the Trump campaign in 2016 16. because I was needed. The Trump campaign's doing a fine job. You know, I was approached back in June when there was some turbulence in the campaign about stepping back in, and I said no. Because of my work on the pandemic, I understood what the progressive left had done. And here, here we go. I mean, this is, this is the start of the campaign already. So, so They had traumatized their base. They had traumatized their base so that their base wouldn't actually come out and vote during elections. They would have to have some other methodology. I have been focused on this civil war that's coming to the United States because the progressive left is going to lose to Donald Trump at the ballot box and try to steal it thereafter. This These is, guys, yeah. they tried to stop me from coming back onto the campaign just inside the 60-day window, which you really can't drop any kind of legal stuff. So it's totally bogus. It'll be dismissed later. It's, and here's the, here's the great, the law of unintended consequences for my enemies. It's actually made our platform bigger. It's got, I've got more access to resources. We are, we are the lead of this fight to make sure that the left does not steal this election from Donald Trump. I think this is, yeah, this is what, what, what I want to talk about uh, with you. Um, and you said uh, that Trump can win this election. And as of today, is he on the path of victory at the very moment? Trump is going to win. Here's just for the German audience, understand something that The uh, back in the spring, we could see because of our work on the pandemic, which we took very seriously. Right. We were all over this pandemic as really being very early on. We realized that the progressive left in the media was causing mass hysteria. okay, and traumatizing their low information voter base. And we could see in the in the spring in these Democratic primaries, nobody was showing up. And then when they voted by mail, a huge percentage of these ballots in Democratic primaries by Democrats were tossed out as being uncertifiable or illegitimate. 69% of Democrats are too traumatized to go to the polls. They need to vote some other way. So Donald Trump right now, for your German audience, and particularly for Alternative for Deutschland and other conservative groups, understand something. Donald J. Trump is going to win massively on the day that matters, that's election day. I will, I will come to the election day. I want to focus first on, on, on the, the time until election day, and then we look into the election day. Um, is there anything that can prevent his victory and hand Joe Biden the presidency? Is there anything what you can see w what can put his victory to danger? Yeah, the thing that can, can stop his victory is this false. Remember, right now, 60 to 80 million, 60 to 80 million um, uh, ballots are being mailed out across our country to vote by mail. We've never had this in the history of the country. Last time in 16, we had about 132 million 
voters. Right now, we're talking maybe 140 million votes this election cycle. Um, you know, I think what's the population of Germany is around 80 million or something. The the the, the you have as many uh, ballots being mailed out just throughout our country, just being sent out. Extra votes, maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 absurd. That's how the Democrats are trying to steal this, and they're doing it by using psychological warfare now, by using the courts, by using street mobs. It's a convergence of three forces they're trying to do post election day yeah. to try to drag this thing out until they get the vote they want. Now, the campaign itself right now, I think, is doing very well. Trump's, the polling's very good. The polling's closing. Trump's got momentum, particularly among, and this is what upsets the progressive left in Europe. Donald Trump is polling very strongly among Hispanic voters. Uh, Biden's having a very difficult time closing on black males. And one of the reasons is black males more and more are becoming economic nationalists. They realize that unlimited illegal alien immigration is really hurting their job prospects. So this coalition that Democrats have had is kind of coming apart. And Joe Biden, as people can see, is a very weak candidate. He's almost like a cipher. That's probably a very nice, uh, nice way to put it. He's very weak. Uh, the German audience never gets aware of all those quotes you can have from him and his, his, his way of, of, of acting or not acting for minutes within uh, his own speech. So um, l let me get the, the, the next question. Is One of our five ed reporters, a journalist, has been reporting on the rolling coup trying to steal the election uh, from Trump. From Trump. Um, can you describe uh, who was involved and could you please explain what the Transition Integrity Project is, TIP, who was involved and what uh, assets do they have? What is this T TIP or TIP or how you, never, you, you name it, Transition Integrity Project? Who is that? The what transition is that? Project is just, is just the globalist trying to do a rear guard action to, to, to basically ward off through essentially a coup, uh, another massive Trump victory. And here's where it is. It's, it's threefold. It's got a legal element to it headed up by, they have a war room now. They've announced the New York times headed up by guess who, uh, Holder, the Holder, attorney yeah. general of Obama, right? So you got, you got Holder as the attorney general heads it up. They have 800 top attorneys. They have a major New York law firm called Perkins Coy has been on retainer. They have former solicitor generals, former U.S. attorneys. Colin Powell. And what they've already filed is 200 lawsuits. It's the reason we need a new justice on the Supreme Court to get to a nine-man court immediately. The Democrats are forcing this. They force this because they're already in court. They're trying to extend the voting time. They're trying to extend the count. They're trying to extend so that these ballots that are illegally marked uh, are, are not certifiable can count. They're already in the courts. We call it lawfare. That is using the legal system as a form of warfare. So that, that is part one from the, from the globalist establishment. Part two is the Antifa and Black Lives Matter street thugs. In the street, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, 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 and they have a group, uh, I think his name is Sean Eldridge, that is now in charge of the uh, civil disobedience. They're going to start showing that the country is ungovernable. They're going to go to the streets. In fact, their, their report that everyone in Germany should read which is called the Transition Integrity Project. We will, uh, just, just, to, just to add this, we will link this also to this video, so uh, everyone who's, who's following this interview can go and find all those links you're mentioning here. And, and, and Raheem Kassam, who I know your audience knows very well, is now at National Pulse, he's editor-in-chief, he's also one of my co-hosts on War Room Pandemic. Raheem has done an annotated version of that that makes it even easier to read. But So the second element is street. But the most important and powerful element, and I don't need to tell the media. alternative side of this, is not just the mainstream media. It's what Miles Guo, the dissident Chinese billionaire, says is the CCP and the globalist's most powerful weapon, and that's social media. Okay. Uh, Facebook just announced today, Facebook just announced right before we came on this interview, that they will not be accepting any ads that declare a winner. Um, uh, on election night. They, they are absolutely already saying that they are going to shut down the Trump supporters and any support for Trump uh, starting on the evening of November 3rd. The, uh, by the evening of November 3rd, you know, Trump will be, uh, will have a massive victory. And what they're trying to do is, uh, is undo this. Let's go back to the Transition Integrity Project. Yes, you, have these, you have these three elements converging, okay? Now, 
Um, they've already put out, if you read the report that you guys linked to, they have four scenarios. Scenario one is where Biden wins in a landslide. Okay, so that's simple. If that happens, Biden wins. The other three scenarios are Biden barely wins. That it's one's indistinguishable. It's very, very tough, like 2000. The other one's Trump's barely wins. In all three of those scenarios, including the two where it's uncertain or Trump's up, that, uh, Biden wins in two weeks because of the count of uh, they're counting these absentee ballots or these counting these phony mail-in ballots, okay? Now, they were so nervous that they got this wrong that Michael Bloomberg has stepped in here. He's the billionaire that is in bed with the Chinese Communist Party. Michael Bloomberg stepped in here. He has the most sophisticated data research group called Hawkfish. And he had Hawkfish go on Axios, HBO, two Sundays ago and say, hey, on the Transition Integrity Project, there's four scenarios. I'm going to give you a fifth scenario. And we call this the Red Mirage. That is where Donald J. Trump is up with 404 electoral votes. You only need 270 to win. 404 electoral votes, virtually a landslide, a historic landslide on election night. And they said, don't call him the winner. Even then, even then. Within two or three weeks, uh, that will be reversed as we count all these phony ballots that are coming in. And so even in Trump wins in a landslide, now, Bloomberg's so nervous that he announced a few days later that he is personally writing a $100 million check to infuse just in one state, Florida, so that Trump's not leading on election night. And he announced yesterday $16 million just to pay the bills of felons so that felons, former felons can vote illegally. So this is the type of thing that Trump's fighting right now. This is the most naked grab for power. I know telling you know a conservative audience in, uh, in, in Germany, you guys face this every day, the smash mouth politics of the German elite, the smash mouth politics of the, uh, the, uh, Bel you know, the Brussels elite. Uh, but the United States of America, we've always had kind of a balance, but it's the first time I think that the deplorables and people in the United States are actually seeing that this naked grab for power and how the rules don't apply to these people. So this is why this is gonna really culminate in something that is unique in American history. Um, you, you've said the number already. Uh, the Democrats are lining up something like 800 lawyers who are just ready to, to, to fight and go against the outcome of the election. Um, is this also one of the biggest threats to, to uh, the, the whole election? Or what is the biggest one? That lawfare part of it is huge. This is why they forced this issue about the Supreme Court justice. Many of these right now are already en route to the Supreme Court. They, what they've done is gone to the state level. Remember, in our elections, it's all run by fi the 50 states and territories actually run their own elections. What, these, what the, uh, what the uh, opponents to Trump have done is already going to court to try to change the rules. What they want to do, they call it election month. They want basically yeah. an unlimited amount of time to, to generate phony ballots, right, phony ballots, and to be voting what we call by the pound, right? And they're using the co courts. We have a term over here called lawfare. It's a, a form of warfare where you're using the courts to do it. They're very sophisticated. They have unlimited funding. They're working with groups that are already tied to the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, they are really, they're, they're ramping up, and they are, they are, they're smash mouth. They're brutal. They're going into these courts, and they have Many of these judges are left-wing judges. So this is something the American people have never seen. We're, we're known, we have a tradition of a secret ballot that takes place on election day. And what they're doing is destroying all the norms of election. And here's the one thing, if we can just take away one thing from this interview, remember this. The progressive left brought this on themselves. And this is what your future entails if we don't stop them now. We are some of the biggest experts in the world on the overall uh, what happened in this pandemic, because why? I know China so well. I was broadcasting about this on January 16th, talking about a historic event that was happening in central China. Why? I know China very well and probably better than anybody knows it in the West, right? And I have a track record of calling things that happen in China that all these people that kowtow to the Chinese Communist Party will never say. We knew this was huge, and we started bringing in experts right away to make sure the American people and our audience in China knew what was going on. We saw early on, and we take this very seriously. We're not somebody who says it's a hoax. Some of my hosts think it's a hoax or think it's been overplayed. 
But my, myself and others on the show have been very prudent about how we position this, right, about the lockdowns and all that. We noticed early on that the progressive left was causing mass hysteria, that they were actually lying about looking at the science, looking at the data, looking at the evidence. And what they were doing, they were traumatizing their low information base. And here's what they've done. They've traumatized it. They don't want to come. These people don't want to go out. They don't want to go to work. They don't. And most importantly for them, they don't want to go to the polls to vote. So very early on, the progressive left realized, oh, my God, Donald Trump's going to win in a landslide. We have to change the rules. This is what this is so important for the first time in American history. We have a lot of the American establishment in the established order is essentially saying we don't care what the people say. We don't care what the voters say. We're going to undo this election yeah. and we're going to force Trump out of office. Which other foreign powers are uh, supporting the left and the, the Democrats other than China? I mean, China, um, on, the other, on the other hand, is also involved, I guess. Uh, would you say, is it China? Is it Russia? Is, is it some others? Look, I'm sure. Listen, the Russians are bad guys. You know, we've uh, you know we've advocated from 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 day one that the, the Germans stop all this. Uh, you know, Merkel stop all this business integration that got with them. You know, t Russia though is a small power. It's the size of New York City when you talk about its economy. It's in a demographic death spiral. It's run by kleptocrats and cause a lot of trouble. Don't get me wrong. You know, I spent eight years of my life as a naval officer. You know, and a, a part of it on a destroyer hunting Soviet submarines, and the rest of it in the Pentagon during the Reagan administration as a junior officer working on the war plan to take down the Soviet Union. I don't need to be told by any Democrat how bad the Russians are, right? They're bad guys. However, they're not particularly relevant when you talk about the massive power, the hegemon of, uh, of the CCP and the Chinese Communist Party that essentially has helped gut German, those great small and mid-sized German companies that are the great manufacturers and tool makers and all that, okay? The Germans know how lethal the Chinese Communist Party is. They also understand how in bed the party at Davos is with the Chinese Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Party and people like Soros, the people that like the globalist model of the party of Davos, that, that, that like the slave labor model of China and really the serfs that have been created in the working class throughout the world, those people support, uh, that support the opposition to Donald Trump. They understand that populism and economic nationalism and looking out for your workers as a sovereign nation is against their plans and they're prepared to. Yeah. yeah, and here's what's so shocking in the United States. They don't care what they do. The big controversy this morning as I give this interview uh, to you, Beatrix, is that they're saying, oh, Trump hasn't committed to a peaceful transfer of power. Everything about the transfer of power that's even in question is driven by them. And this is why they're using the media cycle. This is information and psychological warfare. They're trying to prep the battlefield so that when they try to steal this in broad daylight in, uh, in, on the, the evening of November 3rd, that they think they've got the high moral ground. We've outed these people. We've been working on this for months. We're the first war room pandemics, the first one to expose them. We kind of forced the Transition Integrity Project to get this stuff out in public. We've done a great job with Raheem and the rest of the team and others to out this. They can't hide under the rocks like the cockroaches they are. And, uh, and now we're going to expose them more and more and more. And I, gotta tell you, I will commit to your German audience. There is zero chance we're going to let these people steal this election from the deplorables. They've been outed. We're going to be relentless. Uh, you know, if people thought I was relentless on the 16 campaign, they haven't seen anything. Because this is the campaign's fine. And Trump's doing a great job. And he will win on election day. The key to victory here is to make sure that he is the individual that gets inaugurated at high noon on the 20th of January, 2021. We, we come to that a bit later. Uh, what is the, the role of the European media, the domestically, but also their international broadcasters? They are all, what we can see, campaigning in favor of, of Biden and going uh, all against Trump. What is the role of what they play and what is the role the media should play um, uh, to, yeah, to go against the, the rolling coup? Media should report the facts and let people make up their own minds, make their people decide. This is a disgrace. It's not media. These are all propaganda arms. If you look at all the mainstream media in Europe, 100%, in, they, they are the propaganda wing of the globalist project. That's the simple way you can say it. That's why it's imperative that you have emerging 
alternative media that can get the truth. In the States, the alternative media is on fire right now. And the reason is people are tired of being spoon fed this propaganda from the mainstream media. You know, the mainstream media, CNN in these places. But listen, here's the thing. The, they can't help themselves. The European media has tried to do the same thing. They've traumatized, traumatized their readers. They've traumatized uh, their base. We understand this pandemic's very serious. We're the first ones to say very early on, this didn't come from a wet market. This didn't come from some bad cave. This is a highly sophisticated, man-enhanced to a gain-of-function experiment. Uh, you, know, uh, un, you know, this is a artificial manufactured virus. And it's quite serious, and it's got to be taken seriously. However, with modern science, right, and, and, and modern therapeutics, and the ability to pay, basically isolate uh, populations that have high comorbidities, whether that's the elderly, whether it's minority communities, whether it's people with comorbidities like obesity or high blood pressure, everything like that, modern uh, communications and science and technology allows us to deal with this. That's not what the mainstream media has done. The mainstream media has traumatized people. And that's why they're all, they're all, you know, not just wearing masks. They all want to stay inside. They don't want to go anywhere and they don't want to do anything. And this is what they've taken modern society. This is at the doorstep of the media. They cannot be trusted. And quite frankly, the media, as I've been saying for years, is dangerous. It's now been turned into a weapon for the globalists. And that weapon is trying to browbeat people that are sitting there going, hey, I kind of like to make my own decisions. I kind of like to make my own choices, right? So you see this in Germany every day. I think the American people weren't really, didn't really believe how the media could be turned into a propaganda weapon. But we see with MSNBC and CNN, the New York Times, the Washington Post, across the board. Now, more importantly, with Facebook and Twitter and, and Google and YouTube, how they basically control the high ground of all social media, and they're going to use it for their own designs. Yeah, and let's let's um, talk about the Hill State College and uh, this speech the Attorney General Bill Barr gave there. He highlighted his uh, authority to manage investigations. Um, I think that was a major point he made. Are you expecting him to issue indictments against members of uh, the Obama administration, against the employees of FBI or CIA or the um, Department of Justice? Is this something you expect him to do? I, look, I think Bill Barr is a great guy, and I think he's done a good job on laying out China. My my concern about Attorney General Barr, there's a lot of great talk. I'm not seeing the action. First off, the Hillsdale speech, the most important part of the speech, I thought, not just my own case, he said, hey, the DOJ and places like the Southern District and others, these young assistant U.S. attorneys are targeting high-profile Trump political allies, right? I don't want to say I fall into that category, but I fall into that category, right? So he laid it out right there. That's the attorney general of the United States saying, hey, high profile political allies of Trump are being targeted by headhunters. That's his words. He called them headhunters. In addition, we've got, you know, we've got the, the uh, with the, uh, Durham, et cetera. We've had these uh, we've had these grand juries in panel. But right now, within 60 days of election, I don't see anything happening. Well, look, I like the wor words. I would like to see some actions. But more importantly, just the actions regarding me or anybody else. That should be off to the side. The most important thing he's not doing, you don't see the U.S. attorneys anywhere with strike forces or tiger teams or whatever to roll up Antifa and these anarchists. Last night again in Louisville, Kentucky and throughout the nation, we had more anarchy and more riots, right, because of a grand jury that came back in the, in the Louisville case, right? And so you don't see the attorney general, I think, having tiger teams. Why is Antifa not designated a terrorist organization? An international terrorist organization, which they are. Why are we not going for the funding of George Soros and these other guys who are funding these people? Why are they not being rolled up by the thousands, right, and, and indicted for 10 years for, for walking state line to cause insurrection and rioting? I just don't see the action. Bill Barr is a great guy. I love the words. It's now time to stop the talk and take actions. Take and the attorney, the attorney general ought to be the hammer. Look. But his speech on China, what he's doing on China and other things is fantastic. And Bill Barr, not a good man. Bill Barr is a great man. But I, I think we need to see uh, more action, even with President Trump. President Trump, a lot of the rhetoric is fine. But it's time. We've advocated for months and months and months. It's action, action, action. People don't care about the talk anymore. They want to see about exactly what's happening.
It's time to stop talking about the Insurrection Act. It's time to start rolling up radical Marxists like Antifa and certain elements of Black Lives Matter, which are radical Marxists. There are a number of people associated with Black Lives Matter that believe in peaceful protest and in situations like in Louisville, situations with Mr. Floyd, his murder, which is obviously what our American system's based on is the right to to uh, collectively protest, right? To to air your Peace grievance on. in public. So and people don't debate that, but that's not what you have here. Let you know Daily Mail, which is no right wing site. The lead story in the Daily Mail this morning is anarchy in Louisville, right? Anarchy in Louisville, and that's what you're saying. I think it's incumbent upon the attorney general to start dropping the hammer on these anarchists and revolutionaries. Okay, um, one last question uh, about the campaign before we then go to the election day. Um, your critics uh, call you Steve, turn on the hate. Bannon, um, our division and animosity to... <laughs> Steve, turn on the what? Turn on the hate, Bannon. This is what we read. At least this is what is covered in, in Germany. Steve, turn on the hate, Bannon. Is uh, division and animosity tools for you to fix what's wrong in America? This is, I say, this is the, the, the lazy left wing protest. Everything I've done, if you look at the, in my work, I'm the leading voice for years on assisting the Chinese people, right, in their quest for freedom against the Chinese Communist Party. I'm the chairman of the Hindu Republican coalition. I'm very close to the Modi guys in working for, uh, in working for and supporting uh, President and Prime Minister Modi and what he's doing in India, and particularly the Hindu Americans in this country. Everything I have fought for, and by the way, I challenge any of those guys about to turn on the hate, show me where Bannon said anything that is even close to hate speech, right? Or even close to being hateful. I am sitting there fighting for minorities every day, regardless of your ethnicity, your race, your religion, if you're an American citizen. The key for me is about American citizenship. We've got to make this right for American citizens. And the problem we've got in this country is that blacks and Hispanics have been left behind because the globalists, right? give them this phony message and then just let out a massive illegal immigration or sometimes too much legal immigration to thwart their economic betterment. They also get us in all these wars throughout the world, like Afghanistan and everything else through the world, that we're, 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 we're taking our resources and putting them into places that don't appreciate it and are not using it correctly. Remember, in these Middle East wars that's driven by the neocon, neoliberal war, world, you know, the order, the established order out of, of out of the city of London and Wall Street, right, has has uh, pissed away nine trillion dollars of American treasure and wealth since 2001 in these unwinnable wars that we're still in Iraq and we're still in Afghanistan. We're still losing kids. We have over 10,000 combat casualties. We have 50,000 wounded. And this is what the elites have done. And they will sit there and go, oh, Ben's a hate monger. You find anybody that I talk to or anybody I work with or any message, I dare them to show something like that. And here's the thing. I don't care if it's the Southern District of New York. I don't care if it's the left-wing media in Europe. I don't care if it's the political class out of Brussels or Davos. They're not going to stop me. And here's the beauty of it. I get stronger every day. My message gets stronger. My platform gets stronger. And I have a bigger impact than I've ever had. And they just have to, in the military, we have a term, embrace the suck. In the progressive left in Europe, the media, the political class is going to have to embrace the suck, just like they've had to do here in the United States. Let's go to election day. Um, what will happen? What is what you see is likely to happen? What is what do you anticipate um, the day of the election day? On election day, Trump will have a massive turnout across the country on people that do the vote like we've always done it, a secret ballot when you go in to pull the curtain behind you. You've got the ballot in front of you. Nobody's there. You fill out your ballot. You don't sign it. You've already checked in. It's a secret ballot. You drop it in. Those votes will be counted that night. And Donald Trump, by the evening of November 3rd, will have a massive lead. And the progressive left will go crazy. They will pull out all stops, all stops to turn around that outcome. And that's the predicate that gets set that they're not going to be able to undo. That election of Trump on November 3rd, no matter what they try to do, They will not unwind that. We will never give up. How many? What? We're not going to give them one inch on this, okay? Trump is going to win on November 3rd. And every, I don't care if it's in the courts. I don't care if it's in the streets. I don't care if it's with their digital 
oligarchs of Silicon Valley, right? The Trump base, the Trump deplorables, and quite frankly, middle class America is not going to push them into anarchy rule, which is what they want. They want to throw this country into a constitutional crisis. They want to drive it to a civil war. They don't care how they take power. This is, you know, people have seen how George Soros operates in Europe, right? This is how George Soros and his, and his, and his folks operate in the United States. We're not going to turn it into a banana republic. We're going to hold that victory, right? Donald Trump is going to be inaugurated on the 20th for a second term. And that's going to lead to a massive, massive, massive outpouring of support for his second term to really turn this into a populist, economic, nationalist, political movement and country. Yeah, let me let me just stress what you just said about the election night. Um, and let me just quote, uh, just read from the executive summary of the Transition Integrity Pro Project. Um, they highlight in the, in the first uh, uh, page, the concept of election night is no longer accurate and indeed, indeed is dangerous. So this, uh, this explains what you just said. Um, they, they think the election night is dangerous because the likely outcome is uh, having a huge majority or at least a majority for, 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 for Trump votes. Um, so Beatrice, hang, Beatrice, hang for a second. It's very important for your audience to understand the words here. Election night is dangerous. Yeah. Right. This is what they're doing with psychological warfare. This is what we call information warfare. They're using their media apparatus to repeat this over and over and over again. And here's the thing. They do not want to be bound by the results of the will of the people. They want to break the will of the people. They're telling the people that election night, your will has spoken through a secret ballot in the traditional way America has voted for over 200 years is dangerous. Not that it may be incorrect, not that it may be needs some reform, not that we need to look at it, not that we, you know, there's some, maybe some changes we can debate, anything like that. It's dangerous. What they're, what they're saying is that Donald Trump is a, is a dangerous tyrant, that Steve Bannon and his henchmen are the, are the merchants of hate, that these are dangerous people. These are evil people, right? This is the type of rhetoric you're getting from the mainstream media and their henchmen. And that's what they have to understand something. We've outed them. We figured out early on, I'm pretty good about thinking downrange, right? Whether it's populism or, or, or a Brexit or whatever. We early on were the first people on pandemic. You have to remember in the United States, we were on this months before the mainstream media even, even got onto it. CNN and these people, we called it a pandemic on uh, January 21st on our show. We initiated war and pandemic, you know, two months, I think, before the World Health Organization called it a pandemic. Two months before CNN called it a pandemic. These people laughed at me when I first started. I said, no, 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 you don't understand something. This is a world historical event. They were dead wrong in the pandemic, and I was right, okay? I was also saw early on exactly what they were going to try to do because they, all, they can't help themselves. These people always overplay their hand, right? And I saw that they were overplaying their hand by traumatizing their low information base by the same type of information warfare they try to use on us, it backfired. That's why they're in panic. That's why they got to use the rhetoric of danger and evil and tyrant. They're in an absolute panic. Okay. Their, whole, their whole purpose the last couple of years is drive Trump from office. They understand they drive Trump from office. They can not just destroy the movement in the United States. They destroy the movement in Germany, in Europe, in Brazil, in India throughout the world and that's why they've got to take Trump down they've overplayed their hand it's backfired on them just just to go briefly to all those other countries what we see of violence and and looting and rioting uh, in the US we can see this also in other countries in South America and Colombia and Chile uh, in other places uh, what is what is behind that in the other in the other countries what is uh, behind this movement? Look, I think you look at it, it's a global, I think Antifa and these, I think you're seeing a, a rise of what I call cultural Marxism. This is nothing but the Red Guard. So people should go study what happened in the 60s. I know in Germany you had a terrible experience then, but really study what happened in communist China. This is a cultural revolution. They're trying to destroy the what they call the four olds, right? Old habits, old thoughts, old ideas, old perceptions, right? They're trying to destroy the traditional, listen, the progressive left has a holy trinity of the three things they're trying to destroy. Number one is the patriarchy, right? 
with the Time's Up movement. The patriarchy has to be destroyed. The systemic racism of America. They think America is a racist nation built on systemic racism. America as it exists today must be destroyed. And the third is this new pagan theology of Gaia, which makes the worship of the natural world of the planet uh, supreme over everything. You see it through the policies of climate change, right? This is not about a logical, rational way of how to try to manage through some of these ecological issues, which certainly have to be addressed. Uh, it's And by the way, I know that because I, I stepped in and, and turned around a project 25 years ago at the Biosphere in Arizona with the guys that actually came up with the concept of global warming and climate change. That's the people at Lamont Darty Earth Institute in Columbia. Wally Broker, the father, that was a close friend of mine. Okay? I won't speak of this as somebody that doesn't know, but now it is devolved into a almost a pagan theology of which you can't even question. That trinity of beliefs, they think they take the moral high ground. And so what they have to do is destroy basic society and the culture we have, the Judeo-Christian West. Listen, Black Lives Matter, you know, that's now been promoted to three founders who all have Marxist backgrounds, have been promoted in Time Magazine now as the, among the 100 most influential people. Just the other day, on the Black Lives Matter website, they took down all of their attacks on the nuclear family, okay? So this is a coordinated effort. One of the things they want to do, and this is why the street thugs are so important, and Antifa are very smart. Don't think they're not smart. I mean, you've seen them throughout Europe for many, many years. They, they're using street anarchy like it was used in the French Revolution to terrorize people. It's not just people that they can hurt or terrorize with property destruction. They realize as the media play those images that kind of normal conservative people, you know, get intimidated. They don't want to get out in the streets. They don't want to support candidates. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to use this street revolution as a uh, as a form of terrorism. Remember, when you talk to Antifa or Black Lives Matter, there's real no negotiation. They don't really have a set of policies you can respond to. Why? The purpose of the revolution is the revolution. Set of negotiating policies, you can actually sit there and talk about some. Oh, defund the police. Defund the police just means let's have more anarchy. Let's take away social constraints. So let this me, is very, it's very let, dangerous on a basis. Let me let me try to at least we've got maybe another five minutes um, to go to another sixteen questions. <laughs> um, what is uh, what should Trump do um, if the vote is too close to call? And what should be his reaction um, if uh, the media and all the public is going against him and ask him to physically leave the office? What is what do you advise him to do? Well, the, 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 it's, it's the questions that the, the public won't ask him to leave for office. If Donald Trump's going to win on November 3rd. That is the point that gets set. That is very important, whether it's Donald Trump or any candidate. That's very important to really for the American Republic. Make sure that we can't have these forces backed by the Chinese Communist Party and others to undo a, a democratic election. <clears throat> This is what our republic's based upon. So the people will not turn against him. You're going to have you, – will you have mass demonstrations by Antifa and Black Lives Matter and other people like that? Absolutely. Will they be in the courts suing every second? Yes. Will the media be – Uh, all over, oh, Trump's not the winner. Will they put huge pressure on Fox News, on Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity to basically back off support Trump? Absolutely. That's why this is going to be so dangerous. And we said we've said this now for months, months on my show and out there. Now that I'm giving a national tour, I'm actually talking to groups five a day to really tell them, hey, here's what's going to happen. Here's how you have to volunteer. Here's how you as an individual can fight this. But no. It's going to happen. And Donald Trump, listen, he's going to win on the third. That predicate is not going to be not going to be turned. We're never going to allow an illegal, unelected, illegitimate junta headed up by a guy that's got the beginning stage of dementia like Joe Biden. Remember, this is why they don't care. Why do they not care that Do Joe Biden's not a dynamic guy, that Joe Biden's not driving policy? Because then Joe he can be driven, of course, yes. He's a cipher. They don't care. He's going to be irrelevant from the day. They get their own program of how they're going to try to destroy the Electoral College, pack the courts, you know, add states, 
at 100 seats, I think. They've got a radical restructuring plan. And now Soros has done in Europe that you guys have seen for decades. Soros has now turned his money, his power, his influence on America. Um, let me, so it's very clear when it comes to uh, the election day and after afterwards, we will see uh, the violence rising. We will see all those Antifa and Black Lives Matters going back to the street and fight. Um, and this might intensify uh, from week to week. Um, where does the military stand? Which side will they back? Maybe that's of importance. Look, we, we don't end up getting a situation. I'm a former naval officer. My daughter's a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. Uh, she is one of the greatest female athletes ever to play there. She was a member of the uh, the 326 Combat Engineers of the one the storied 101st Airborne that uh, held off uh, uh, the Battle of the Bulge at Bastogne in World War II. She served in Iraq uh, during the administration of President Obama uh, with the 101st. Um, and so we come from a military family. You know, uh, under no such a situation do we want the military involved in this. We shouldn't get to that that point. And we won't get to that point as I'm going around the country and advocating citizens get involved today. If we have enough volunteers as poll watchers, if we have enough volunteers as election officials, if we have enough lawyers that volunteer to fight the lawfare, if we start getting networks and groups together and get the social media out and get use the alternative media to get out and have President Trump's back, we won't get to that situation. And the right thing here is to put down an insurrection. If they're called out through the Insurrection Act, it's because you have anarchy and revolutionaries in the streets that don't want to abide by the election results on November 3rd. This is what the progressive left is trying to do. What they're trying to do is very simple. Having traumatized their own base with propaganda, now they're trying to use propaganda to tell people, oh, yeah, well, what's really got to happen is we – the election night's dangerous because voters made the decision, the will of the American people. It's dangerous. This it's is dangerous. what they're right. And we're going to vote. We're going to count until we're going to count until we get a victory that overturns Trump. We're telling them right now that's never going to happen. And they're going to have to, as we say in the military, embrace the suck. The suck is you lose. Donald Trump gets his second term and we're going to run the tables on you guys. That sounds good. Thank you very much for joining us today again, Steve Bannon. Um, and I hope we can give this a follow-up maybe yeah. before the 3rd of November or, or even a bit later. Listen, Thank Beatrice, I'm, I'm always available. I'm a great admirer of what you guys are doing. It's just fantastic. You have many allies in the United States and people that look to you in your fight for freedom. So anything I can do to help Alternative for Deutschland, anything I do to help your broadcast or any alternative media you know in Germany to get the word out. I'm available 24-7. This is, I'm spending all of my time on this. Uh, the people trying to stop me have failed and they've actually made my platform bigger. So I'm available 24-7. I really admire what you guys are doing. Your partners in the fight for freedom. We can't lose this. If we lose this, the Judeo-Christian West will eventually, this is what they want. They want to tear down the basic underpinnings of the Judeo-Christian West. We can't allow that to happen. This is the greatest fight of our lifetime, and I'm just honored that we've got so many patriots uh, in uh, in Germany that are fighting for this also. We do. Thank you so much, and good luck. And thank you for watching uh, this time, this special show with Steve Bannon. If you liked it, please don't forget to like the video, to share the video, and to even subscribe to our channel so you do not miss the follow-up. Thank you.